uh, that you did the Bible reading in the morning. I didn't know you had. But this mind that you did the Bible reading. So tomorrow we shall do the reading again at the same time. Uh, because we always read the Bible in the morning. Now I want to go into the teaching about blood battles in the name of Jesus especially signals in the unseen realm and how you can respond to blood battles if they have been incited against you and how do you what is your position in, and I want to believe God that as I teach in this one, one hour uh, I'll be sharing with you the realms of God will be open to you that you always your sound will be a signal for the nations praise the Lord uh, media team can you give me that uh, wheel on the screen the wheel we always use may we go through that wheel as we look at as we identify openings and portals and times when the blood battles are intense the bible the bible says in the book of isaiah chapter 5 Bible, Gamba Isaiah, or Esureo Kutano. Isaiah chapter five. Isaiah, Esura Eo Kutano. Verse twenty-six. Orunyiri, Uruabiri Momuka. It says he will raise a signal for nations far away. Nti Alistura Bendera, Uruin Be Mawanga Gadiwala. And we saw for them from the ends of the earth. Eda no kukuma kunjego yegoyensi. And behold, quickly, speedily they come. There's something I want to say before we start. That your destiny partners have been quickened to come faster. And speedily they will locate you. Oh my God. Your destiny helpers. Behold, they quickly come from the ends of the earth because they have picked a signal in the spirit to bind themselves unto you to accomplish the work of the Lord without human hands you haven't heard what I say I say destiny helpers the helpers of the vision God has given you. Don't make me shout. Help us for the work God deposited in yourselves. Are picking a signal in the spirit. And they begin to follow it until they find where you are. And they will open their bags and open their hearts to fulfill the vision. Because the fulfillment of their vision is hidden in your vision. You've not heard what I said. The reason they are picking the signal from the nations because they've come to understand they cannot accomplish their vision without your vision being the head. Because always for a vision to be fulfilled, you have to look into a vision. Every vision is a continuation of a certain vision. Every 
every vision in our days is a continuation of a vision. There are many visions that your vision is now going to accomplish, to finish. Those ancient visions, those fathers, those men of faith who began a work and you are supposed to finish that work. So your vision is finishing their vision. Oh my God. Do you hear me? And there are those that are picking in the spirit. And they're going to say, I picked you in the spirit. And I've been following the steps. I've, moved, I've been moving in the lines of power. And they have brought me to you. And I have come, not because you love me, even when you don't like me. I'll do whatever it takes for that had to come to pass because my destiny is tied within you. I'm sorry, the language I'm using, many of you may not understand. It's it. for men and women that in them destinies, visions are locked. God gives you the vision but he does not give you the keys. He gives the key to someone else to unlock the vision he has given you. Am I talking to somebody? The ways of God he gives you the vision but he gives the key to someone else but someone else has the key but does not have the vision now they are saying that time has come to use this key to unlock the vision because in that vision is my destiny mm. There are children the Lord has brought you to take care. And you think they are orphans. They are not orphans. They are keys. You have the vision. They have the key. They are not orphans. They are not just fatherless. They are, they are keys. And the enemy wants you to throw away the keys. The enemy, not the Lord, wants you to throw out the keys of those children. People are telling you throw them away. When you throw them away, your vision will remain locked up. Your relatives are telling you throw away the orphans. They are telling you they are useless. Why are you wasting your money? Why are you wasting your time? Why are you wasting your resources? They are even rebellious. They are even cursed. Because they know those children, the orphans, the nobodies, the world rejected them. Their parents rejected them. Their fathers rejected them because of the key they have for the vision of your life. Mm, I wish I'm talking to somebody. Some of you, you threw away the, the, the keys. The people, the person who has the key. Maybe you had something negative about them. Maybe they were stubborn. Unrepentant. Not, 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 not appreciating you. Because they are keys. Just keep holding them. Until they are of, time, of, of, of a certain age. That the testimony that you took care of them the testimony of your patience in them qualifies you for the manifestation of the vision that child that son you think is a problem because of a disability is not a problem is a key 
Chisumuruzo. Is a key. Chisumuruzo. That's not autism. autism. That gets the key. Chisumuruzo. If you take care of that key well, dreams will be open to you. Visions will come to pass. That daughter of yours is not a problem. It's not rebellious. It's a key Chisumuruzo. for the vision in you. You have the vision. That child who does not talk is because of the key. If they had talked, people would have stolen the key. And God kept the mouth closed until you take care of it. And the vision is unlocked. You need to understand what I'm talking about. You better tell that child, you are a key. You are a key. And I appreciate you being in my life. I appreciate you being in my life. Because I know the key is you. The vision is me. Hallelujah. 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 So I'm saying right now, they shall pick you up in the spirit. They shall pick you up in the spirit. They shall look for you. And because they know, they have a key. It's not for, for you, it's for them. But when they come, the vision will be unlocked. The vision will be unveiled. The vision will be faster. Oh, Someone said tonight, I receive the key. You know, that's how God works. He gives you the vision. He gives the key to someone. And when the key, say, the Bible says in verse 27, Isaiah 527, none is weary, none stumbles, none slumbers or sleeps. Not a westbound is loose, not a sandal strap broken. Their arrows are sharp, all their bows bent, their horses' hoofs seem like flint, their wheels like the whirlwind. They are rolling, they are rolling is like a lion, like young lions they roll, they growl and seize their prey. They carry it off and none can rescue. They will growl over it on that day like the growing of the sea. And if one looks to the land, behold, darkness and distress, and the light is darkened by its cloud. You can get time and read. After that, after that prophecy concerning the signal, listen what I'm going to say. After Isaiah prophesying about a signal. His call takes a turn. You know what happened? King Uzziah dies. King Uzziah Nafa. Don't let me preach. After saying they will pick a signal. And all is going to happen. The next chapter. King Uzziah dies. King Uzziah Nafa. Hello? Hello? And he says, the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. That's chapter 6. He says, there will be a signal. They will come fast. They will fight. They will go into the realms. And then, Uzziah dies. Uzziah <laughs> dies. Who was this king? What was he doing in the life of the prophet? What had he interfered with? Come on, is someone here? Can you pick me up in the spirit? Who is his Uzziah? What was he doing in the life of the prophet? Remember this, the prophet who is to prophesy the Messiah. But he's prophesying here and there. And he sees a signal. Uzziah dies. And he says, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne. As 
you forgive me because I, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm ahead of some of you Isaiah is shifting to a realm of operation from the human natural realm now he's going to receive a call from a throne he's been operating from a gift now he's going to operate from an encounter with the throne no longer with the gift now he's going to go participate in the divine assembly he's going now to operate from the divine council He has been a man of the gift which can be manipulated which can be duplicated. Uzziah died and is promoted to be a member of the divine council. This is for an intercessor I think. From a gift now he's going to sit you know, when the Bible says Elohim stands amidst Elohim and judge the gods Elohim God stands in the divine council you know that scripture let me read to you Psalms 82 God has taken his place Psalms 82 God Elohim has taken his place where's someone who's, where's someone in the scriptures Psalms 82 Elohim has taken his place in the divine council. How I'm not disturbing someone right now. Someone said the divine council. Divine what? It means there is a council in the divine realms. There is a council. Am I to somebody? Marabosha. You know, one day, a king with his friends, they decided to go for battle but they need a divine guidance they call the prophets the prophets in the land some even made horns <laughs> they say this is how you are going to win the, the battle then another king the king said friend I don't trust these prophets. I don't trust them. <laughs> I don't trust their games. <laughs> these guys. I don't trust their horns. <laughs> and he says, is there not a real prophet in the land? Isn't there another prophet in the land? And the king says, There is one, but I don't like him. I don't like him. There is one, but I don't like him. Because he does not prophesy from a gift. 
It comes from a realm that is not manipulated. So I don't like him. Say, so, okay, let us call him. They bring Micaiah. Say, so, will we win the battle? He says, you will win. That's from the gift. From the gift, he says, you will win. You know, when you prophesy from a gift, when you are hungry, <laughs> you prophesy food. <laughs> because it's, the gift has to feed you. <laughs> when you are hungry, when you, you need to pay rent, you prophesy from rent. I'm not talking to you. Are you getting me? <laughs> and many that stay in the realm of the gift, they can be manipulated and deceived. So they cannot go through the wheels and unlock destinies. I'm, I'm somebody. And I don't know why I'm holding this. <laughs> what is this transaction? Where has it come from? Whatever it means, the Lord knows. Because on earth, why should I pick this thing? For what? <laughs> God have mercy. I hope none nation is being replaced. Maybe South Africa needs to pray. <laughs> because that one is not normal. Uh, let me back to my my, my teaching. <laughs> so they said the prophet, okay. From the gift we have had, but what is it from the divine counsel? What is it in the divine counsel? What's it, what is boss? It's disturbing you. I, I can go back up. It's okay. Let me go up. I'm sorry. You know, I hate pulpits. I don't want to be up here. I want to be there with the people down there. You better give me a way here that I can go to. I don't know why you've limited me here now. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Juliet, your flowers. Huh? <laughs> I think you're saying I have to keep my husband far from the people. Instead of putting a rope, he has put flowers. You are a wise woman. <laughs> you know, one day, it was a, a month after our wedding, a month or two, I went to preach in a crusade. And she was, she was a bride. And I was preaching. I was casting out devils in a crusade. And at a time of prayer, I had closed my eyes. And a young woman <laughs> with a sword began charging towards me. She was at a distance. And she was the only one watching. And in heart she said, my husband is going to be stabbed in my presence. The girl was running towards me with a sword and my eyes were closed. And she could not run to stop me. She could not shout because the sound system was so loud. And she just said, she said, I was watching and I'm saying my husband of one month is going to die in my presence. And as she's, then she's watching the girl running. And she, the only option she had was to intercede in tongues. And me, my eyes were closed. One of the intercessor boy opened his eyes and the girl was almost here with a sword. He jumped 
crashed into her fell down and I opened my eyes and then we prayed for her and she told us we, we were four in the meeting we had been sent to come and kill you there but when the, I, you stop me my friends have, to, have, have run away so I think from that experience she's guarding me <laughs> <laughs> with flowers <laughs> so every time I begin to pray for people <laughs> she comes next to me <laughs> she walks with me because <laughs> she said to me <laughs> honey I was becoming a widow after one month in marriage. That's why she cannot take chances that's why she, she puts this <laughs> I, I, I think so <laughs> decoration okay <laughs> and and she pays a lot of money for this and this is her money not church money personal money for her she says i will decorate the altar now i was saying from the gift the man said you shall win but they said no we need the judgment we need the decree from the divine counsel and he said well, okay okay that's what you want last night I was in heaven <laughs> I had a discussion <laughs> Elohim was saying who is watching the prophet is part of the divine council and it's sitting and the prophet the Elohim says who will go and entice Ahab to go and die Ramoth Gilead one came up and said it doesn't work another one came up another one a spirit came up a spirit came up. A being. And said to Elohim. I will go. And be. A lying spirit. In his prophets. Do you hear the transaction? I will go. And be a lying spirit. In his prophets. And Elohim says. You have my vote you shall accomplish it that was from the divine counsel that was the divine counsel a decision from the counsel of the sons of God one day the divine counsel was sitting and one member of the divine council also was present. And Elohim asked him, Where have you been? <laughs> Where have you been? He said, I have been somewhere on the earth walking up and down. He's a member of the divine council with an official position as, as prosecutor in the divine council. You said, I, give me a high five. That is it. He, a member with the office of the prosecutor in the divine council they ask him what case is on the agenda today and he says on the agenda sir I have job <laughs> job is on the agenda today for prosecution not persecution for trial this man I have investigated him the reason he serves him because you put a hedge around him and the reason I'm prosecuting him that hedge around him I challenge it why there is no evidence that he asked for it you better read your bible how could you 
Elohim. Elohim. You put a hedge around Job. He did not ask for it. Many of you have been wondering if God had put a hedge around Job, how, what, how could Satan ask to be removed? Because Job had not asked for it. So the prosecutor is saying, I am not accusing Job. I am accusing this court for, for, for trespass, for putting a hedge around Job, which Job did not ask. <laughs> you better pray. I hear people say, they sing a song in Luganda which I no longer sing. Because whatever I get and I have not prayed for it, Satan can challenge it. I hear people say, whatever you get, I have not prayed for it. The, the enemy can challenge it because it's prayer that gives the legal right to own it. <laughs> I didn't pray. I just got the husband. Hey, who gave him to you? May have been the devil. Because you did not pray. So Job did not ask for the hedge. And the and the enemy, the prosecutor, was not after the Job's wealth. Not Job's children. Was after the hedge. Because we say you put immunity on this man, but he has, has not qualified for it because he has not asked. And Elohim said, I'm a just judge. So, what's your petition? Remove the hedge. Remove the hedge. <laughs> and they remove the hedge. Huh? And he said, okay, I've removed the hedge. But do not touch his body. He said, okay, I'll go by that order. But I'll return for additional petition. Hmm? And he says, okay, give me his body. Say, have it. Issues. Job is not there. But there are activities in the divine council. You better attend some of you. Job is busy. Enjoying the wealth, giving sacrifices. He is not aware that there is a debate and an order is about to be passed to remove the hedge. I'm talking to intercessors. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Job, Yobu. by the time he wakes up, Wazukukira. he's almost cursing God. When the hedge was removed, even his friends cast him. Even his wife. Because the hedge has gone. Have you asked for the hedge? Wasabolukomera. Have you asked for the hedge? Wasabolukomera. And say, Lord, hedge my children. Abana wange, take hedge my marriage. Ofumbo wange, but and I'm asking komera. for it. Iranchi saba. Back to the gift. But to dark chidabu. So I'm giving different scenarios. Umpa ebintu ebienja uro. Micaiah participated in the divine council. Lucifer was there because he's a member. He has a seat. Even in Revelation, they mention him. What's his work? The accuser. The antidicus. Are you getting me? Now listen, one day, I have a different scenario of the divine council. 
Joshua, yes, the high priest, has a vision has an assignment to build the glory sanctuary. Glory sanctuary. Consecration sanctuary. Joshua is to build it. He received the assignment. He has the plan. He has the drawings. He has the money. Then Zachariah sees what is happening in the divine council. What, what did he see in the book of Zachariah? Joshua, the high priest, standing before God, before the angel of the Lord. Where is he standing? He was going to start a vision, a, a work, and he was summoned in the spirit. He was summoned back to headquarter. Back to base. Say, we've had the work you're doing. But there is an accusation. There is a report here that your garments are filthy. I'm teaching think that you read your Bible. Some people will say, open here. You just know what I'm talking about in the book of Zechariah. Joshua is the high priest. High priest. He's starting to build the temple for, that, for the ark of the Lord in his generation. It had, or it has, it, he's going to finish the work. But as he starts the work, a report comes report that his garments are filthy. So he's standing in the divine council. He's ready to address the council concerning the work he's doing and the provisions he needs. And the prosecutor says, Objection, my lord. He cannot do the, He will not do the work. He's standing on his right hand. He said, I'm standing here to oppose. The word is to oppose. The one who brings a case against. He says, This is the evidence. And they say, Okay. Then God, Elohim says, Elohim Nagamba, you. Go. I've heard your accusation. But today, it's not sustained. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. Today I rebuke you. In the days of Job, he was not rebuked. I want you to go and read your Bible and give me the answer. Why, in, why for Joshua? Why for Joshua? God said Satan, I rebuke you. But for Job, his petition was granted. Here is the reason. One was present in court, another one was not present. <laughs> Are you getting me? One was in court. While the accusations were going on, he was standing before the Lord. The other one was busy in the business God had given him. He didn't have time to come in the presence of God. He didn't have time to come and stand before God. He was busy counting the sheep, counting camel, counting children, counting grandchildren. But Joshua was standing in the presence of God amidst the accusation. He still had time to return and leave the projects and stand before God. Are you getting me? So he said, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. Is not this a man? This is a, this a man plucked 
from the fire. And for Jerusalem. Not for him. But for Jerusalem. He has been picked. He has been taken away from the fire. And he turned to him and said. He, those around him. He told them. Remove. The filth garments. Take away. The filth garments. And to him he said. Son. Today. I remove. Your iniquity. He said, remove the filth garments from him. And to him he said, Behold! Lava. Behold! Lava. I have taken your iniquity away from you and I will clothe you with pure vestments. I will clothe you with pure vestments. Let me say something. This very important. You know, I'm going to show these wheels and, and blood battles how to win them. But listen to this. You must be sure you are clothed and clothed right. You must be sure you still have your garment. You must be sure that your garment does not disqualify you. It's not about what you do. It's about you are qualified to fight that battle. It's not about zeal. It's about you are qualified. There are battles I try to fight. And God says not now. You're not ready for that. Your garment does not qualify you to stand in that realm. If you go without the right garment, you will be disqualified. You, you will be hit because your garment describes your jurisdiction in your battles. Oh my God. I hope it's not complicated teaching. Garments in the spirit are very important. And every season has a garment. And every assignment has a garment. Even angels change garments according to assignments. Have you ever had an encounter with Jesus? With, that is not with a garment? Without his body covered? No, he's always have. And garments change according to seasons. So Joshua was doing a work loving God. But the garment was filthy. Not old. Not torn. Not dirty. But filthy. There was a smell, a contamination on his garment, and that was the accusation. Wow. Wow. Hello? That's why he says, Who are these? Clothed in white. They are washed their garments in the blood. They have washed their garments in the blood. Let me show you a scripture here. And then we shall proceed to Isaiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone say glory to God. Say today, I keep my garment. Say, I keep my garment. Say, I keep my garment. Because I know the attack on my life is about my garment. Oh, you've not heard what I said. Some of the attack on my life 
is about my garment. Say about my garment. And I recover my garment in the name of Jesus. Say I recover my garment because I know the attack on my life is about my garment. Say I take back I take back my garment in the name of Jesus. You know in the days in the days times when Jesus was on the cross one of the contention the other contention was after when they were contending for his body. You know that. When Satan was contending with Michael for his body. But many of you have not understood another transaction that was hap what happened before he was buried for his garment. Have you ever asked why these men were were fighting for his garment. And the deal, the deal was they tear it and share it. But thank God they did not tear it. Why? The disciples needed it. That's why when he rose from the dead, he left the garment there in the grave. The cloth remained there. The turban remained there. Because it was not torn. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor I need to pray. Now, now look at this. The scriptures say. In the book of Isaiah 59. Verse, for, verse 14. Just as he turned back and righteous and stands far away. For truth stumbles in the public squares and uprightness cannot enter. Truth is lacking and he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. The Lord saw it and it displeased him that there was no justice. Then he saw that there was no what? Huh? He, the Lord wondered that there was no one to do what? No one to do what? No one to intercede. Then his own arm brought him salvation and his righteousness upheld him. But here the, the next verse. He put on righteousness a breastplate. The helmet of salvation in his head. He put on what? He put on what? Come on, he put on what? Garments of vagency for clothing. He put on garments of vagency. Eh? Pray that one day someone does not pray that prayer against you. That he asked the Lord to put on the garment of vengeance against you. Uh -huh. Pray that no one prays that. That God for puts you. on the garment of vengeance against you. He wrapped himself in zeal. Say with zeal. Say with zeal. Yeah, he did what? He put on the garment of, of vengeance. Can you imagine? Garment of vengeance. And one day, the Isaiah says this. He sees in the spirit and he asks something. He says, Agamba. you know, let me show you Isaiah's vision. In Isaiah 63. Now hear the, hear the vision. Isaiah 63 verse 1. He is in, in, the, in the spirit and he says, who is? Who 
who is this who comes from Edom? Edom. In crimson, in crimson garments from Bozla. He who is splendid in his apparel. Marching in the greatness of his strength. Who is asking? Who is asking? Who is asking? Where is he? In the realms. He's in his prayer room. And as he ascends in the realms, he meets a guy. He meets a man matching greatness of strength. And his garments are chrisomed in gum, uh, uh, red from Bozla. So he, he asks, Who is he? So the one coming answers him, It is I speaking in righteousness it's I I love being in the realms I love being there and I'm talking to these entities Isaiah sees the guy coming sees coming and say who is this there's a song I love I wonder I'll learn it because I the time I want to sing it, but I don't know even how to sing it. Who is, it? Who is he? Who is he coming from the east gate? Who is he coming? Am I talking to somebody? Have you ever been in your prayer? And he, he still he begins to come. And you hear the footsteps. He's moving in. He's coming. And you ask, Who is he that's coming? You want to run away, but your legs deny you. You want to shout. Your mouth cannot speak because he's coming. He's entering your place. And you know everything is giving way. You know the mountains are giving way. You know iniquity is giving way. You know the room is giving way. Your room becomes so large to contain him. The walls begin to expand because it has to contain his majesty. And you know the one coming is the great I am. And you begin to ask who is he? Who is coming to me? And then he says to Isaiah, it's I speaking righteousness. Mighty to save. Do I have a prayer warrior here? It's I. You've been in your room. And you're saying, Lord, for South Africa. Lord, for United Kingdom. Lord, for Africa. Father, I will not eat. I will not leave the room. I call upon you. Then suddenly, the atmosphere changes. The room expands. The mountain gives way. And you hear him coming. And then he say, who is he? And says, it's I. Mighty to save. Mighty to save. Come on. The, the story goes on like this. As I ask the question again. The second in verse 2. He asks another question. Okay, you are mighty to save. Look at verse 2. Then he asks him. Tell me. <laughs> My son has never seen this. What is the question? Why is your upper red? Because I have seen you in chapter 6. I saw you seated and the, your garment had covered the temple. The robe, the train of your garment had covered the temple. But this time, your garment has changed. Why is it red? And your garments like he who treats the wine press. Hallelujah. 
love going through the Bible. Isaiah say. Isaiah Gamba. Hmm? Hmm? The one I saw in Isaiah 6 in the divine council was, is not the one I'm seeing now your garment is red and it's as if one who trade the wine press you know the wine press it's a place of transaction every intercessor knows the wine press this is not a place of preaching place of going down of dropping the grapes squeezing them from a fruit to a drink from a fruit no time of chewing it's time of drinking you know for years we've served the church fruits why we tell them to eat but they have no teeth they will get constipation they need one to turn the fruit into wine into a drink because fruits you throw them the wine flows the wine flows days have ended when we say receive and we say let it flow to you flow in the new wine where there is new wine someone must prepare the new wine skins <laughs> Jesus, Son of God. He says, Now, what have you been doing in the wine press? <laughs> they are talking. The mighty one to save. Then he says, I have trodden. Verse 3. I have trodden the wine press alone. And from the people, no one was with me. I trod in my anger. I trampled them in my fury. Their lifeblood spattered on my garment and stained my apparel. They are blood have stained my garments and no one was there to intercede and I wondered why there was no one there to stop this stain on my garment that I may not judge them Lord don't come to the wine press I am here don't come father Jesus don't come I'm standing in the gap I'm watching the wine press I'm interceding for the people that the mom if the blood stains your garment we are in trouble are you getting where we're going now? I, will, I, I know you pick me later. You know some people have understood my teachings after five years. It's not an easy when I come into this room. You just need to be in the spirit and pick where I'm going. Because it's often times I don't preach to you. I preach to the ancient ones who cause the trouble of your life. Sometimes I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the ancient councils that defiled your bloodline that caused the pain. So this message you may not know it because I'm taking you back in the ancient councils and present a case and they say okay, I have found an intercessor who can undo this it's not a matter of understanding it's a matter of picking up you know this 
Because you were present thousands of years when the transaction was done. You were present. Why are your garments stained? He says, all my apparel. Look at verse 4. Thank God for that. Say, now for the day of vengeance was in my heart. But and my year of redemption has come. My year of redemption. My year of redemption has come. And this conversation is between Isaiah and Elohim, but in a realm of blood. In the realm of blood, they are talking about issues. He's talking about the apparel, the garments, and he's saying, Why are they stained? And says, I was angry, and I began pressing the one place. Thank God. Thank God for these days. Thank God you are here. Before the building. Because you have to be at the wine press. You have to go and trade the grapes. I will release you into that field. And you go in every corner of this field and walk on it and say, This is the wine press, the new wine of intercession, the new wine to clear the wheels, the new wine to remove the iniquity, the new wine to heal nations, the new wine to heal my bloodline, the new wine come from here, and I'm trading the wine press. You know, there was something I saw in the Bible about Gideon. He was trading wheat in the wine press. <laughs> I better teach something here. A mighty warrior was busy trading wheat in the wine press. You know there are places like the wine press and trading floors. Quit floors. Trading floors. Where transactions are made. Can I speak a word? There are places you are going to buy back and turn them into altars. You're going to buy, not claim, but buy back. You know why I said amen? You know that boy why I said amen? You don't know. That's my cousin. This whole hill was the land of my great grandfather. Miles and miles. I had to come back and buy it and put an altar here. That's why he said amen. He understands the transactions here. When you mention my family and you mention this area, they know this is the men for my family. My, my clan. But I had to come back and not just claim and buy the land. And pay according to the price of the day. And reopen the wells. Maybe you will get time to go at the south end of this property. You'll find a well, a community well that has been here for hundreds of years on this property. You don't know what is that well. Our fathers drank from it. 
and was taken away. And I came back. Bought the land. Bought the land. Found water there. Now put an altar of the Lord. Bring the nations on the land. Bring the nations on the land. When one of my great grandfather made an alliance and an agreement with, with Britain, Britain and signed off the land to the British. I had to undo that. I had to go in the UK and do a prophetic act there in the, United, in the UK. And when I returned, I bought back the land. Rabo Shaka. Are you getting me? I had to go there and do a transaction in the spirit. And after that, buy back the land. Cancel the, the covenant, the agreement of the British that our great grandfathers signed of the nation. In, in those agreements, the men who signed the 1900 agreement in my bloodline. I had to go back to those masters in the spirit and say I get, I cancel the one who sold the land to you. Now I get it back. Now I return get the money and go to those who had owned, bought it and say how much do you want? I, they said 600 million. I say pa, 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 receive cash. Now I would have said that land is my names. I said no. It must be in the names of the ministry because now it's my new bloodline. Life is my new bloodline. I wish I'm talking to somebody. Are you getting me? And then the land has the well. Remember the well of Jacob? <laughs> Do you know my name? I am Jacob. James is Jacob. So I buy back the well and I bring the nations and I call the nations and say come back to the land and raise the altar you are here for transactions you are here for transactions you are here for trading you are here on the wine press if I were you I would speak to that water at the well and say look you are redeemed you have been redeemed unless the wells of your father are going to be rediscovered you are going to buy them back you are going to buy back properties houses land and say I turn you to God because I'm a redeemer I'm a, re I'm a builder of foundations am I talking to somebody now tell your neighbor put on the right garments because you are going to go to the foundation blood battles are fought at the foundations if the foundations uh-huh 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 if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Huh? Huh? Are you righteous? Yes. But you can do nothing if the foundations are destroyed. Honey, am I right? God bless you. Are you getting me? On together. I am righteous. But to take the nation, I must go back the foundation and sort out the defilement. 
if I did not deal with the foundation, I would be a good preacher. But nothing happening. Nothing happening. Because the foundation was still claiming things in my life. May God give you the grace. May you receive the anointing. May you receive the grace, the wisdom, and the ability to deal with the foundations because blood battles are in the foundation. There are blood in your foundation that you're going to deal with as a foundational element. You need to read my book. Freedom from bondages of my father's house. When the Lord told me deal with the foundation. That was in 2003. That I finished the work last year. From 2003. Up to 2023. I was dealing with the foundation. Of my father's house. That statement I'm talking about in that book. The year was 2003. When he told me that. When I, when I, I began the journey. 2003. After 20 years, I finished the work of my foundation and he launched me to the nations. And whatever I do succeeds. I've been doing found, transactional foundations since 2003. When I began dealing with them, I got cancer. The first manifestation of attack was cancer. Cancer. I began doing the foundation. Cancer came. For a whole year. Leukemia came. What was killing me? Foundation. Why cancer? I didn't know how to deal with them. But I could not die. From that I had to receive authority. Amen. Two thousand and three I got cancer. It's the same year. Are you getting me? The same year. I said the foundation. Deal with foundations. Until last year. After 20 years. Dealing with foundations. I don't know if you've begun already. I don't know if you are, you, you are deliberately dealing with foundations. You are tr trying to start project after project. Mission after mission. They will end in tears if you don't deal with foundations. If you don't deal with issue of your foundation. If the foundations are destroyed. What can the righteous do? One of the promises in Isaiah. You shall build foundations of many generations. You shall build foundations. Is it Isaiah 61? You shall, be, you shall build the repair of the breach. The repair of the breach. You shall build foundations of many generations. And that's what God is doing. You know, many times you think when you deal with familiar spirits, lying spirits on the wheels, and you get relief of one year, and you think it's done. Give me that wheel and I show this people something. If you deal with these, where are the wheel, please? If you deal with this, like spirits, unclean spirits, demons, evil spirits, infirmities, ruling spirits, familiar spirits, and if you look at this wheel, there are openings here as gates. 
But the next layer, the network of altars, it is a sealed circle. There is no entry. The only entry is still on the outside. But this time, going to the foundation. Do you get it? Look at that wheel. The, the evil spirits dislodge them from the gates. But the moment you go in and deal with this, you cannot proceed. Why? Because the circle, the realm is locked. They have idols, network of altars, their powers, sorry, they, they are, they, they, the network of altars and their powers. And you spend time in close realms. It's easy to deal with this and waste all your time here. But if you identify the way of consecration and say, I'll go to the foundation, the kingdoms and the cycles and the systems and the prison and the thrones will be there but they are centered around the foundation so if you go to the foundation and remove the defilement the blood that defiled the foundation then all these will collapse prisons will collapse and captives will come out. Are you getting me? Systems will be there. But they will no longer affect you. There are times everything I could try to do. Systems will come against police, police, war law, whatever. But this time, whatever I try to do, systems say, how can we help? How can we support you? How can we help you? Why? The foundation. The foundation. Even the local leaders want to support. Why? In the past, local leaders resisted. Now, they are saying, we are partners. Systems are now agreeing with me. Why? Because of the foundation. Hello? Hello? Because of what? So Isaiah chapter 6 when his, Uzziah dies he sees the Lord. One of the things that it says the foundations were shaken. The foundations were shaken. Father let your voice expose the foundations. You know, when the foundation is exposed, you know where the cracks are. Oh. You know where the breach is. Someone say, expose the foundations. I feel like praying. Because I don't know what's going to happen. If I start praying, we may not leave this place. I know you, you want to go for lunch. Someone said, the weight of the foundations. Listen. The foundations, if they are defiled, what can you do? You know, when you have a corrupt foundation, whatever you build collapses. Whatever you start collapses. Whatever you put on dies. And you are years and years and cycles of failure. Patterns of failure. Patterns and cycles of, 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 of shame. Is someone here saying, I'm bad? 
You better stop now and not start anything new until the foundation is sorted out. Until the blood that's crying in the foundation is dealt with in these days. The issue you're looking at concerning marriages that it's in the foundation that marriages were corrupted. The reason your marriage has struggled because you are the one to save marriages from corrupt foundations. And the Lord does not, has not allowed you to enjoy marriages until you deal with the foundation for the deliverance of your people. Did I say that blood battles are fought at the foundation? They are battles of foundation. Because before the demons came, they infiltrated the blood. They brought things in the blood. Strange gods. Strange fires. Strange blood. Foreign blood. That came into the blood. And your blood is not pure. You are not judged. God is not judging you. He's giving you an assignment. To undo ancient covenants. To stop their operation. That not, no more will people suffer. Because of those covenants. It's not for me. Never again. Will my people be landless. Never again will my people lose their land again. Never again will my people be vagabonds. It's not for me. It's for my people to return to the land of inheritance and raise altars of the living God. Never again will we be vagabonds in the city of our inheritance on the hill the Lord gave our fathers. Never again will we be vagabonds. Never again will we leave the land to be slaves in foreign lands. Never again will we be slaves in lands where we are called foreigners. Never again. Never again. I will never be called an alien, a foreigner, an immigrant. Because God is saying, I will establish you in the land of your inheritance. I will establish you. And you will not be just a citizen. You will be a father of that nation. I will make you a solution. I will make you an answer. I will make you a builder foundation. Many shall be employed. Many shall find employment because of your obedience. Many shall find destiny. Many shall find reason and meaning of life because of you. I will make you a builder of foundations. Somebody must pick this up. I said someone pick this up. Never again will you be called a foreigner. Never again will you be running as a tenant. Never again will you be on Lee's life. On leasing your life. Leasing your ministry. Leasing your marriage. Leasing your family. Never again. You will be an owner. You will be a business owner. You will be a, a man who opens employment who turn economies of communities oh I better agree with someone right now I, I better agree with someone right now hear me and hear me well the foundations are hearing and you are changing them now you are now saying it used to be witchcraft but I now build a foundation of intercession a foundation of holiness a foundation of the fear of God a foundation of wealth you will not be a foreigner the land will not vomit you the people will now bless you the nation will now accept you the curse has no power over your ministry anymore because the foundation is now cleansed 
Let me prophesy to someone right now. Let me speak to a ministry right now. You are not just a church. You are foundation. The economy of a community will change. People who bring wealth, even non-believers, will be blessed because you are changing the foundation of a community from a community of witchcraft to a consecration city. This place will never be Namaina. It's consecration city. Things are changing now. Why? Because of the foundation. Because of the foundation. Your children will not run to foreign nations to find employment. But they shall build cities of their own in the land. My God, my father, somebody need to hear this. I, do you agree with me? I need a man to agree. I need a woman to say, James, I pick you up. I agree with you. My daughter will not be a slave in a foreign land. My son will not be a slave in a foreign land. My life will not be a shame. My son shall not be ashamed. My daughter shall not be ashamed. In a foreign land, they will be established. They will build cities. They will build new places. In the name of Jesus, they will be the restorers. They will build the rude places. Lift your voice and pray. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Lift your voice and pray. Give me your hand. God bless you. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. I want you to agree with me. Let's agree together. As a minister who changed communities, who changed communities, when you come in, everything changed. The foundation of poverty is broken today in your village, in your tribe, in your people. The foundation of poverty in Namaina is broken in Manyangwa, is broken because a son has shaken the evil foundation. Raza foundations in your place, in your community are being shaken right now. You are the one who is going to turn things around. When you appear, you change communities, even if it's Egypt. When you appear, you become a solution. Even in a foreign land, you take over. You are a possessor. You are a restorer of road places. You are a builder of bridges. You restore the road places. Establish it in the realm where you are. Establish it in the realm where you are. Establish it for your children. Establish it for your great grandchildren. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Rimanda la kadidia de jelelele. Rasi kata la jelelele. Rima ba 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 the Lord has made a builder, a builder of cities. My seed, Prophesy upon that seed of your womb. Ramadala 
with the throne where you are ula mande la katida that you will become la katana makwe ula bagatidia de 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 resi katana de 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 ra ba 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 in the name of jesus sit down and tell something don't stop praying i'm just i'm just giving an instruction the altar is open to pray and deal with foundations I'm going to give you one hour. You can come to the altar. You can walk the land. You can walk anywhere. You can pray with someone. You can agree with anyone. But I want the freedom of prayer for, the, for, you, for you now. I want to go in one hour of prayer. You can go through this land. Find up the space. Or you can be here. Or you can do whatever you feel. Takes you in the realm of prayer. On issues of foundations. We will return after one hour. The altar is open. You have issues in your life. Present them to the altar. You can be on the altar here. The altar extends to the ground. You can decide to have a conversation and be joking with a friend. It's up to you. You can decide to play or to pray. It depends on you. You can decide to join hands with a friend, with, a, with, a, with, a, with your partner and do transaction. I will release you now. You can stay here you can walk around but be in prayer. But if you choose not to pray, it's also okay. But it's up to you. I have done the work for 20 years. The realm is open for you to partake what I've been doing. You can lose, you can choose not to take it. Or you can take it. But let me tell you, by three to this day, the foundations have given way. And when we return Turn. It will be transaction time. In the name of Jesus. I release you now. Even those online. Even those on TV. We release you now. We are returning after one hour. Wherever you are, you are praying. Wherever you are, you are doing what God is telling you to do. This is more of our transactions. 